Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new night point of view review. In front of us is the new Citroen C5 Aircross. Now this is the facelift and uh, this is the new mild hybrid. Now if we unlock the car, you can see the bright LED headlights. <clears throat> now yes, we already had same looking uh, car on the test, but it was the plug-in hybrid. Now this is a front wheel drive, inside is the 1.2 PureTech and electric motor that it's a 48 volt system that uh, you know just acts as a starter to push the petrol and give it a little bit more kick but it can also recuperate and charge the small onboard battery the battery is smaller than one kilowatt hour the usable is even less maybe half and uh, this has system 136 horsepower it is linked to six speed uh, dual clutch automatic transmission uh, we're sitting on 19 inch alloys, very comfortable SUV. Now, if I unlock the car once again, you can see the rear redesigned taillights. I'm gonna just use the key fob to show you the cargo space. Um, that's that. Not sure you can see a lot because it's uh, kind of dark. Uh, this by the street light, the fifth door is blocking the street light. I'm gonna keep the key in my pocket because it's keyless entry. Uh, it's been raining, it finally stopped, so that's great. Uh, I did a little consumption test before this. <clears throat> so you shall see. Hopefully you, you're going to watch the video at least half and uh, I'm not going to keep you to the end uh, to get that information you're eagerly waiting for. Now let's uh, start the car. You have to hold in. It's not like German cars where you press it once. Now I'm just gonna turn the LEDs on. I just want you to see the beautiful interior. Now uh, one thing, huge recommendation, there are a few options, I didn't read them all, but these are the comfortable seats. I forgot the exact name. Uh, an option is here, leather Alcantara. You can also get it leather textile. Uh, doesn't matter, both are Excellent, but these are very comfortable seats with extra cushioning. <clears throat> uh, with that detail out of the way, let me just put this back on normal. And, well, excellent car. Now, uh, we're gonna see if we can do a little music demo. Now it's usually domestic music past midnight. Okay. Okay, I can't play the music for too long not to get a copyright streak. The speakers are quite good. <clears throat> they're not excellent, but they're good. And they're also not bad. Now, uh, just a little info about the infotainment before we start. I'm uh, somewhat disappointed that Citroen hasn't allowed an update to uh, put the navigation to full screen. Uh, instead, they're still keeping the AC controls. Now, the new C4X and the updated C4 have full screen navigation, uh, it would be better. And they haven't upgraded the camera. So, you know that I had the new 208 on the test, and the 2008 they all have HD cameras, even the new C4X that I had. Um, and look at this if I switch to reverse, the camera is blurry. I mean, it just looks bad, honestly. Uh, let me just show you if I reverse towards that pillar, the camera will switch, I get close enough, see? So that is practical, but the camera resolution looks like something from like 80s or 90s is like really bad. It's standard resolution quality instead of HD that you have on uh, new Stellantis cars. So I'm a bit disappointed here. These are the only cons I would say about this car. Everything else is amazing. It's a very comfortable car. It just feels nice really, you know, I can really find a comfortable spot. <clears throat> Let me just show you here the trip computer you're eagerly waiting to see. And um, we're gonna start driving. So trip one, as you can see here, I uh, did 51 kilometers. My average was around 60 kilometers per hour dropped. My consumption was driving uh, it was rainy though 60 to 70 it was 4.7 the lowest and then 80 90 it was 5 liters of gentle 
cruising so that's it and a trip two uh came to six liters you can see 146 kilometers and now my consumption was around 6.5 in the day point of view driving and on the way back when i've uh floored it on the highway kind of really spiked fast it was around seven but it started dropping after i finished filming okay uh we're gonna drive out uh, i noticed that the battery is low because uh, I think when you turn on the car it uses that battery for the AC and so on because it doesn't start the petrol uh, but don't worry we're just gonna charge it by you know uh, recuperating when we let go of the uh, <clears throat> gas in this case uh, the car starts slowing down uh, that's a kitty uh, cars are slowing down by recuperating so it charges a small battery now I'm driving into the normal mode and let me just uh, turn on a bit front. Okay, it was slightly condensating, so I just wanted to clear that mess from my windshield so I can see better. Okay, uh, when you see the Speedo white, it means it's using petrol. And then when I let go, you can see it switches to, well, the battery is actually low, but at, like now it switched to electric. So you can see that like this light blue color, this means it's driving electric. So you just know the difference. You can have automatic wipers, but from this rainy day experience, I would say they're not super precise. I mean, they work, but sometimes it's just like they need to do a little wipe and <clears throat> they don't. So, feels like my Tesla though. But the key point you are interested in at is, is 136 horsepower enough? And how's the six speed automatic? Well, the automatic's good. I don't have any complaints. And 136 horsepower feels actually quite well for this car. This SUV is not too heavy. <clears throat> I'm saying this because the plug-in hybrid might be slightly heavier because of the bigger battery and bigger electric motor. But I've been also testing a lot of electric cars, although this is a mild hybrid. And the point is uh, 136 horsepower in sport mode feels really alive. Even in this uh, normal driving mode, it feels okay. You can see that in my day point of view driving as well. So um, it feels more powerful because <clears throat> uh, the petrol is being also like uh, aided with the electric motor. It's a smaller electric motor, so it helps. Now, um, maybe something that I would like <clears throat> and that it was better in the plug-in hybrid is you can drive more further electric. Now, when you're driving gently like now, it is like, you know being pushed by inertia but it's also using the electric motor to push the car so we're driving electric right now and then when i let go it recuperates and charges the battery so if, uh, the battery is low at the moment but few recuperations or harder recuperations will just charge the battery and the battery is full <clears throat> now Overview in this car is quite okay. I'm mentioning this because in the 208, it was kind of uh, around the middle mirror, inside mirror, it was kind of a big blind spot and the A-pillars were kind of obstructive. In this model, uh, it's really not, and it's not a problem parking this car either. So it's all good. Now, soundproof, actually, you know, uh, despite being a boxy shaped SUV there's actually quite good soundproof inside and today it was windy when I was filming the day point of view driving where I don't talk and it was quite good uh, soundproof now uh, parking is not an issue with this car the uh, u-turn is great uh, <clears throat> have a nice big mirrors and I like generally the big tall feeling uh, we can see the hood 
and for such a tall person such as myself two meters or 200 centimeters or 6.6 in feet this is a perfect size uh, car for me now uh, I've mentioned this is sitting on 19 inch alloys and despite having 19 inch alloys um, we're currently on summer tires this is very comfortable because it has a comfortable suspension and this is something I personally like and I think all passenger cars should have this uh, comfort level uh, you know excluding sport vehicles of course now the brakes I know I've mentioned that the brakes were kind of sensitive on the um, plug-in hybrid here there are but not super sensitive so they're just like in between the like the normal setting and like high or more aggressive these are like in between like slightly more sensitive but not super sensitive so they're not aggressive from the start they're just slightly more sensitive than the usual ones see I'm anticipating it's a red light I, I've let go of my foot car is slowing down it recuperated the charge the battery and then I continue on there's like a really small gentle shake um, when the petrol kicks in but it's nothing uh, major and you know with this comfortable suspension even the bigger potholes and manholes you feel them but it's not a hard hit so that's the gentle part you can see that our battery is now more than half full so that's nice So excellent SUV for a family. Now this specific model costs here in Croatia, we have 25% value added tax, um, 37,400 and some change. Now uh, I saw that this model with the same color option costs around, I forgot now, 33 or 34, something like that and a half. So there are a few options here that kind of raise the price, but you know, the price, the entry price for this mild hybrid is actually slightly lower. So, and in some countries where you have uh, less value added tax, it's actually even cheaper. So. I would say that's not too expensive for this size of an SUV and considering it's a mild hybrid. Now, uh, the plug-in hybrid had a hybrid badge. This one doesn't on the back of the car, but it is labeled hybrid in the configurator, but it's I think it says mild hybrid. And for the plug-in hybrid, it says plug-in hybrid, so there won't be any mistakes. See, now I'm cruising just 50 because I don't need to drive faster and the speed limit was 60. So I'm just driving electric and then I'm saving on fuel. You can see actually here it says, since we started, for, uh, since we started, excuse me, 53% uh, our drive is electric. 54. Okay, this guy is also kind of slow but uh, I'm just gonna move to the other lane now uh, trip one so I'm not gonna reset this but it is slightly going up but trip two is kind of stabilized at six liters so just to uh, reference it with the plug-in hybrid I remember I've had 5.5 because I watched my own video and I checked and then it was something like 6, 6.5 but you know uh, I can't remember what was the season because it was if it was colder the consumption might have been a bit higher but generally it's very close and this one you don't have to charge it uh, you don't have to worry about potential problems if you want to keep the car long term uh, for the onboard charger if it breaks down or for the battery which is bigger so this has a smaller battery it's covered by a warranty but you know it just gives you a little bit of ease of mind in that area if you are concerned although 
<clears throat> if you're really concerned then just go for the pure petrol or diesel there is still a diesel option uh, i think diesel might be probably the most fuel efficient but if you're going for the petrol because of the emissions and so on um then in that case um it's really soft over this kind of deep main holes um you know uh if you really need to go for the petrol uh for some you know local laws and so on co2 emissions uh the mild hybrid is probably the most efficient we're going to join the highway i will you know switch to sport mode speed a little bit just to show you the performance and the consumption will spike so i know that for a fact now i was slightly faster i'm gonna start driving a little bit more alive now i was faster in the bends and you know uh yeah there's just like a pedestrian walking on the middle of the lane um I was uh, going in the band a little faster and it's very stable, you know, the car doesn't lean too much, so that's something I like. Now, I've, uh, since I watched my own video, I've said that the car is leaning when I'm braking forward, but on this one, I didn't know that's that, so that's that. I'm going to floor it now all the way. Pulls very nicely. Charging the battery. Now the headlights, it's rainy, so I think it's okay. You know, it's rainy, so a lot of reflection and so on. I'm gonna switch to sport mode. Now in sport mode immediately, it turns off the electric motor. I'm gonna kick it in all the way. There's like a little delay at 144 for some reason. It's like some sort of uh, gear change or whatever. So I don't want to speed, but this was just a little demo for you. And despite rainy uh, day and I mean, uh, there's some water on the asphalt, not too much now, but this is quite okay it's not too loud driving 100 now and it's on primus c3 summer tires so from michelin I, I, uh yeah primus c3 okay i shall put 110 here so just to show you the uh cruise and let me just show you the uh I'm gonna switch back to the normal. And just to show you the, uh, the driving. So you can see the lanes here. It's keeping me in the lane. I can change the distance. Normal, close or far. And if I try to pull it to the side, look at this, it's just gonna keep me in the center. That's what I like. I don't like when cars bounce you like a ping pong left and right. It keeps you in the center, so that's good. Now, uh, this is creating a glare and you can turn off this screen. So only the uh, digital cockpit is on. So this is good because there's less glare on the back. If you have small kits, this is actually very good. I just tap on and it's back. So that's excellent. So I saw a blind spot turning on, but there's no cars, just like the rain kind of plays with it. So if you're on music here, for example, you can see the navigation here. It's a little bit dark theme, so I'm not sure if the camera is picking that up. Uh, I can go to the personal one. 
Uh, of course you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I just didn't connect it. And it's also limited to the screen. Uh, so you can't use the full screen because of the AC menus. And I think really Citroen, if by any chance someone's watching this from Citroen, you should, you know, reward your customers for loyalty. Just give them an update, give them a full screen navigation. That's, they, they will be really grateful, you know, and you're giving them then value. This currently, this is not a value for money. And, you know, in 2024, it's criminally bad. It sucks that you're saving money on this ro low resolution cameras. I mean, seriously, this is gonna put a lot of people off. Some people might be okay, I'm not, I don't care, I can see when I need to park. But come on, having such a bad resolution is really a poor excuse to save money. Just, you know, it's, it's disrespecting the customers and the navigation as well. Those are the two key features on this car that really disappointed at. Everything else is great, but that is such a turnoff. Okay, uh, I needed to say that, you know, others are not gonna say that. I do have the balls to say that, and someone needs to tell it out loud, you know. It's a big elephant in the room, but, you know, we have to say it. Okay, so here's 80, uh, I'm doing 90, so I just put a limiter. But really, uh, using the limiter is like using cruise control. Uh, it's always higher consumption. It's never perfect. So one of the reasons why I don't always like to use cruise control. I'm trying to think if I've actually missed something. Now uh, I won't go do a headlights test. If you want to see that, go to my uh, plug-in hybrid night point of view drive. Uh, check that out uh, this time I just want to wrap it up uh, because I already filmed a review of the exact same car it's same blue color dark blue same interior and everything else so that's that okay brake performance you can see the brakes slightly more sensitive but not too aggressive and they work nicely but also by recuperating we've pushed some juice in the battery so uh also like from technical aspect when you are not using your brake by anticipating and uh letting go of the acceleration and recuperating you're not just charging your battery and saving on fuel you are also saving your uh, brakes because you're less wearing off your discs and your brake pads so they will prolong their life and uh, potentially save some money on the long run as well car manufacturers are not happy with this or car dealers but it is the reality now uh trip one says 5.5 and we did almost uh 20 kilometers and trip two is 6.1 see it's just slightly faster driving it's still six liters average so that is actually quite nice what to say about this car it's an amazing uh, comfy suv it's an excellent family car i really love it if i didn't have tesla if i'm not into evs i would definitely be looking at this i really enjoy comfortable suvs comfortable cars in general and this is one of those cars where you really uh, enjoy driving it's nice and relaxed the interior is really nice. These seats are extra comfortable. I'm not sure if this has the uh, massage seats on the C5 uh, aircraft. I know the C5X had those, so that would be a another option that I would really like on this car because everything else is perfect. I was just uh, like that for a uh, nice uh, long cruising. Yeah, to end the video, because we are at the garage, go for it if you're looking for this car it really is amazing if you're not um, really what's the word I'm looking for if you're not uh, disappointed that the cameras are low resolution and that you don't have full screen navigation 
then you know this car is really good so no problem at all now same as the 208 I had on test so this one is driving electric it has the pedestrian warning system but this has a better soundproof inside so I couldn't hear it for the most part when the windows is raised you won't be needing those have cornering fog lights that's nice here okay I'm gonna park it here so you can see the car a little bit that's it so our consumption slightly went up and started falling down again so it's nice and economical uh, let me just show you the cameras it is a bit dark but reverse so yeah blurry even when it's rainy even more blurry but yeah i just wish those cameras were more sharper and that they gave you the full screen because it looks so much better on the c4x i had on tests as well uh and for the future maybe some ambient lights wouldn't hurt but that's it uh thank you for watching if you like this video it helps me a lot if you Give it a like if you share it, especially on Citroen forums. And if you leave a comment, so everything like, share, comment helps. That's what the algorithm likes. Uh, just a little walk around front and side and the back. So also good looking SUV. And let me just turn those lights once again on. Actually, I have to lock it and unlock it. Uh, there is a keyless entry, but someone disabled it, I guess. Uh, it's a bit sensitive. Uh, but again, great SUV. You're not going to be disappointed. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe. Bye.